this is Lauren Kimball for ANI 150 and this will be the final tutorial for our sci-fi crate project. In the previous tutorial we utilized stencils for painting the top box here using a default stencil that was available inside of Substance and then we imported our own alpha and we painted this Wally decal as also a stencil. And now our crate is ready. We are done. Let's start rendering. If you're ready to render, there are two options available. One, you could export your textures out of Substance Painter using either a plugin or using the texture export settings and render this in a different software package like Maya or Marmoset. Or you could render within Substance Painter, a still image render within Substance Painter using iRay. Now, if you decide to export and use something like Marmoset, just a little caveat, Marmoset does not support UDIMs. At least at the time of this recording, Marmoset Toolbag 4 does not support UDIMs. Maybe, maybe you're watching from the future and we're now on Toolbag 5 and maybe they made that happen. But at the time of this recording, they did not. So I would recommend if you're going to render outside of Substance, maybe choose something like Maya. All right, so I'm gonna be rendering using iRay. However, I think it's worth knowing how to export these textures. So I'm gonna go over here, File, and click on Export Textures. Now the first window is their global settings, and we're gonna to wanna to set this to something. You know, set it to an output directory where we know where our maps are going. So if you weren't using some custom plugin, uh, what you would wanna to export to in this case would be your source images folder for your Maya project. I'm not actually gonna export any maps, so um, I don't really care that I just stuck it on my desktop, but you, you typically aren't gonna wanna populate your desktop with these maps, because if you look down here, you'll see 66 textures. Like, whoa, 66 textures, what is that about? Well, over here under global settings, you'll see every material that we've created. So we had six, six materials, right? Every one of them has their own set of textures, a base color, a roughness, a metallic, etc. And in the case of the crate, there's all these additional UDEM tiles. So for every one of these tiles and for every one of these materials, you're gonna have a large output of maps. Now in the future, if you don't want all these maps, you can choose to mitigate the amount of materials that you use. And instead of using UDEM workflow, you could just pack everything into a single tile. It's really up to you. It depends on whatever workflow is going to best suit your needs. For this particular demo, I thought it was helpful to learn how to use UDEMs. So we end up with quite a few textures that we're going to be exporting. All right, so once you have your directory selected and your template, which again is typically gonna match your project settings. So when you first created your Substance Painter scene, we clicked on PBR Metallic Roughness and that is the template we want because that's gonna determine the output maps. Everything else can basically stay the same. Actually, I think I'd wanna change this to PNG. Uh, PNG is a smaller compression, but it's lossless, so you're not gonna end up with having some sort of degradation of your texture like you'd experience with a JPEG. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with PNG. Um, size is fine. The texture set is 2K, so the size is gonna be 2K, and all the rest of the defaults are fine. Going under here, I see that I've got my base, rough, metallic, but emissive is on here. I didn't really use emissive map, so I'm gonna go through and make sure to uncheck emissive everywhere under each of these materials, because I wouldn't want that exported. The output template, I could click on PBR metallic roughness. This would allow me to kind of change my naming configuration or revisit any of my other export settings that I played with in my global settings. Uh, specifically if like let's say for some really random reason I wanted all of these to be in PNG but I didn't want my normal map to be a PNG I could be very specific with the output with this uh, template tab generally speaking I don't mess with this list of exports so this is everything that's going to be exported there are the that's the name of the tile so it's gonna be crate low buckles base buckles height metallic you'll see that it's numbered based on what tile it has. So I packed the buckles into the seventh UDEM. So you'll see 1007 
I don't know why it always begins at 1000 instead of just 0007, but there you have it. If we go down to crate, you'll see there's uh, 001, 002, etc. So that just gives you an idea of what they're going to be exported as. And then you could just click on export and 55 textures would it be would be pulled from from our scene. Now, once we're done with that, uh, it's a good thing to remember that there are two different types of textures that we were working with within Substance Painter. There were our channel maps and there were our mesh maps. So channel maps are what, had I clicked export, that would have been what we just exported. And that's everything that is assigned to these different channels. So color channel, height channel, roughness. If I click on C, you can toggle through and see the different maps that we exported. Now if I click on B, these are our mesh maps. The difference between a channel map and a mesh map, just as a quick reminder, a channel map is one that we paint and artistically generate in Substance Painter. The mesh maps on the alternative side of things, those are generated by the high poly mesh that we fenced in Maya and then sculpted in ZBrush. When we brought that in and we clicked bake, those were the maps that were generated. They are not maps that we paint, they are maps that we bake. And so when we exported those PBR maps, they exported all of these. Let's say you wanted your mesh maps too. So I would go File, Export Textures, and under Output Template, I would change it from PBR to Mesh Maps. And then if I click on, say, Box, for instance, I can see that the output maps have changed. Instead of seeing color and height, I see normal base, normals. So I generally don't need most of these maps for rendering in Maya or Marmoset. I would just want my ambient occlusion, and that's it. Now you might be wondering, hey, what about your normal? What's really cool about Substance Painter is when I kicked out the normal map from my channels, so when I exported my channel uh, set, it automatically combines the normal channel with the mesh map. So you don't have to export an extra normal mesh map. It's already covered. The only thing you really would need is your ambient occlusion, and that's how you get to it. So I'd go through and I'd uncheck everything except the AO map from all of these, and then I would look at my list of exports and export, and that's all there is to it. Then you would plug it in to your, to your materials in, like, let's say, Marmoset. Obviously, we wouldn't use Marmoset because they don't host um, UDEMs. But if we were to, if we had this in a single tile, you know, that's what we would do. Now, I want to go ahead and render inside of Substance Painter. So how do we begin? Well, what you'll want to do if you want to render inside a Substance Painter is go to the top right hand corner of your screen. You'll see a little button that looks like a camera. Click it. And what you've activated is the render view within Substance Painter. Now to the right you'll notice that there's render setting information. In orange it says rendering and now it says done. It tells you the resolution of your render, the scene size, the iterations, the render time. And you can pause a render at any time. Yeah. Down here you have your sample rates, minimum and maximum samples. I don't usually play with these. This is more than sufficient. The thing that I usually play with is max time. So up here you'll notice that it rendered in about 10 seconds, nine seconds, but essentially 10 seconds. And you'll notice it went through 20 iterations of a thousand. So with every iteration, the render's getting a little better, a little better, a little better. You can either max out the time, so you can do seconds, minutes, hours, and it's going to stop when it either hits the maximum number of iterations or it's gonna hit the maximum number of render time that you assign it. 10 seconds is fine for a preview mode, because it just it just lets us move things around and set things up without, you know, going too render crazy. <coughs> Sorry, I got a bit of a cold. Underneath this, uh, you've got caustic sampler enabled off. That has to do with like water caustics or maybe subsurface scattering. You might want something like that on. Firefly filter is enabled. The Firefly uh, filter is basically filtering out hot spots. You might notice a few on my crate, these little white speckles. Um, this filter helps mitigate those. You can overwrite the viewport resolution and set your own like 2K resolution, whatever you want over here. And then ultimately you'll save your render. Now there are additional settings under display settings. 
So under the display settings, um, the very first thing you'll notice is environmental settings. This background here of this savanna, that's generally this default within Substance. If you don't like it, you can change it to just about anything you want. So you could change it to like oh, soft studio lighting. And you'll see it automatically change in the render. You could change it to over the clouds. And it's very kind of got some coolness to, to it. Um, uh, cannabis ground. Just be aware that whatever lighting system you set up or that you pick from, because this is an image-based lighting system, the color of the environment map is going to affect the color of your render. So maybe choose something that doesn't have a lot of color information, like this uh, campsite here, or this camp, camp, not campsite, canopus ground. It's got a lot of orange in it, and you can see that it's altered the look of your crate or the crate. So typically this rubber tire looked a lot darker, a lot more distinct. Now it almost looks like a dark orange and it's made the semi-yellow orange color look far more orange. It's really changed the look of our crate. So be, be kind of careful with what you choose. Um, I'm going to stick with the default if I can find it again. Is it just panorama? I think it's just panorama. Yeah, because I was fine with this. Now, if you want to change how the light is hitting your box, you can hold down shift and then right click and it will change the rotation of the panorama that you're utilizing or the dome, the render dome. And so you can just find a setting that you really like. If you want to have more dynamic lighting, you can just kind of play with it until you like it. You can also increase your exposure if you want it to be a little brighter or a little darker. Whoa, that's way too bright. That little goes a long way, it seems. Scrolling down, you can turn off the background if you want by activating clear color. Now my clear color is set to purple. Um, you can set it to anything you want, black, white. I like purple because my crate is mostly yellow, and so purple is kind of a complement. It is kind of, it is. It's a complementary color to yellow, so I thought purple would be nice. You could play with the saturation and wash it out a little bit more so it's not quite so intensely purple. You can darken it, lighten it, change it however you want. You'll notice there's a little bit of a cast shadow here and that's because there's a ground. You could raise, lower this ground or you can turn the ground off altogether. So I think I'm just going to turn the ground off altogether. There are additional settings down here. So you could um, play with your camera. If you used Aperture for instance, you could kind of add a little subtle blur. So the center of the aperture would be more in focused and then the further out you go, the aperture would, um, yeah, that's actually really intense. Let me drag this all the way back down. The aperture can keep most things in focus and then have like a little slight blur. Um, I think I broke it. <laughs> Let me turn that all the way off. So I would probably have to enter in this in manually just to have the subtlest bit of blur on my mesh. So let's try 0 0.0001. Yeah, that might be a little too low. Let's try 0 0.001. Yeah, it's still not quite showing up. Let's try 0 0.01. See how that looks. So now you're starting to see it. Now it's gone too far. There's a little bit of sharpness and a whole lot of blur. I'd want to go below this, maybe 0 0.005. It doesn't really matter because I'm not going to be utilizing it, but if you had wanted there to be a focus on like the center of your mesh and have it blur slightly as it goes away, Aperture is really cool for that. Um, there's also post effects, so I can scroll down here. I want to turn Aperture off. Uh, activating post effects, there's lens distortion, there's color corrections that you could make, things that you do in Photoshop you could actively do to your render. One of the things I love is Viginette. So if I unspool Viginette and I activate it and I turn it up, you see that it kind of chokes out the, the outer edge of it, of your render, and kind of gives it a soft gradient, which is a really great way to frame your render. So I really like that. Um, there's uh, temporal anti-aliasing, so adding a little anti-aliasing can be nice, especially if you end up with lots of speckles and stuff that maybe um, 
maybe the Firefly filter isn't, you know, dealing with. So you could, you know, you play with um, anti-aliasing if you want. There, there's lots of options down here. One of the other options is mesh wireframe. If you're wanting to get a snapshot of your wireframe, you're not going to be able to do it in the render mode. But it's still here, so if you go out of render mode, and you go into your display settings, you can totally turn on the wireframe if you need it. You just can't, you just can't do it in the render mode. All right, so, is there anything else? I don't think there's anything else of super importance. If I was ready to render, I would definitely increase my render time, maybe to at least 60 seconds. Press enter and just let it go. I may want to adjust that render time, maybe play with some of my display settings depending on the amount of noise, or maybe my render would just come off perfectly. It, it's, you know, however you want to finagle it. Uh, but once you're done, so I'm not going to sit here and play with the render. I'm going to just press pause. Let's say that this was rendered and I didn't have this noise issue I was dealing with. Uh, what I could do is I could just click save render and it would save my render to the desktop as a JPEG or I prefer PNG again for that lossless quality of the render. And that's it. I can make as many still images of this as I want. Maybe turn this down to 10 seconds again. And then I could rotate this in my render. If you or like me. Oh, 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 I know why it's not working. I forgot to unpause iRay. That's important. Whoops. If uh, you are like me and maybe you're not utilizing as much RAM, like this is my, my beater machine as opposed to um, what I would be doing higher work on. Um, so I'm only working on like 16 gigs of RAM, I think. So if you um, are using less RAM than what's ideal, which would be like 32 or 64 gigs, then you can also just click over here, go back to your main view, and I'm just going to drag this over. Typically, you could press F2 to show this view, but if I do, it's going to turn off my recording. And you can position this and kind of get the lighting the way you want it by holding down Shift and left clicking. And then clicking on the render view, it'll adopt what you've done in here. So if, you're, if it's just lagging too much in the render view, you can go ahead and change it in here first. And that's it. That's all there is to it. If you want to kick out some still images of your of your crate, you just click on that render button. You set up your render as you would like to see it. Go through your display settings, um, up the maximum time, and then save your render. And I hope this has been a helpful set of tutorials. Thank you so much for for watching. And uh, yeah, until next time.